invite you to be praying the, the prayer intentions and any others that you might have or uh, however you choose. But may the Lord bless us as we worship this morning. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your grace that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
reading from the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness, and the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail, came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine, flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. the word of the Lord. Thanks be Thank to God. God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and we were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, you, Lord Christ. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, 
when did you come here? Jesus answered them, truly, truly I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to inter eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, It was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Would you pray with me? May the beauty of your word, O Lord, drive all falsehood from within us. May the witness of your spirit lead us into all truth. And may the love of your will crown our lives with joyful obedience. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever been in a friendship or any kind of relationship with someone who after... I don't know, maybe the first few days, the first months, maybe even after a few years, you realized that they were more interested in what you could give them than they were in you. That's a really heartbreaking discovery to go through. Because we pour ourselves into those relationships. If we're any kind of normal human being, at least, we pour ourselves into those relationships. We seek to give, we seek to provide, we seek to be there. And then sometimes, unfortunately, we find out that it's not us they wanted. It was what we gave them that they wanted. Jesus is in the midst of such a discovery, although I can't really properly say it was a discovery because he knew he's God, God the Son, the second person of the Holy Trinity. He knew what, where their hearts were. He knows where our hearts are. And after having fed them in that miracle of loaves and fishes, in the midst of trying to get some time alone with the disciples, especially with the 12, to be able to debrief them about what they encountered as they had been sent out and then came back, and trying to be able to, to build within them all of the the stature and all of the wisdom and all of the faith that they would need as those who would lead the church following his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. And the people who are wanting what he can offer them, not even understanding the fullness of what he can offer them, 
get in the boat after they see that only one of the boats is gone and they sail across to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. They find him. They hunt him down. And they don't start with, we're hungry, feed us again. No, they're, they're a little bit smarter than that, like the rest of us. Hey, how you doing? Uh, you know, like that haircut on you and, and all, you know, all these things that people who are about to con you into something say to you before, I taught middle school, I know this, okay? I know the lines. Jesus is getting a line from these people. You know, how did you get here? When did you come over here? And the response of the Lord goes right to the heart of the matter. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, not because you saw a glimmer of my identity, <coughs> not because you saw that God's kingdom is breaking into this world in a new way that will renew the whole of creation. Not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of loaves. There are so many Christians in the church today who almost continually live in this mindset. We talked about the difference on Thursday <coughs> night between the godly mindset and the worldly mindset and, and what it is to be in the middle of those two things sitting on the fence and how that hurts us. There are some Christians in the church who who are striving to let go and let God and, and understand that the peace and the joy of their salvation is not the be-all, end-all. It's not about their personal happiness. It's about growing in the grace and wisdom of God. It's about allowing the Holy Spirit to literally invade our personality. We don't imitate Christ in the church. If it were just that, we would be a bunch of pretenders. We allow the Holy Spirit to work on us deeply in such a way that our mindset, our character, our thoughts, our words, our actions literally become those what Jesus, those that Jesus would feel and speak and think within us. It's so much deeper than imitating. And then he goes on to say, do not work for the food that perishes. The saints who have lived through great trials, and I'm thinking of people like Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who surrendered everything for the sake of the gospel in Nazi Germany. The saints who have endured great trials have understood that everything is meaningless save this one prized possession in their lives, the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. The body they may kill, Luther said, but God's truth abideth still. Where? Here. Here. God's truth abideth still. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. <coughs> Here's the irony. They, and sometimes we, come asking the Lord for extraneous things, things that just in the kingdom, maybe don't matter. And in the same amount of energy that we expend asking for things that will simply make us happy, 
we could be asking for things that make us true. Things that complete God's work of salvation within us. Things that take us down the road toward complete sanctification. And then they ask, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Okay, good. They're going down the road with Jesus. He opens the door. He shows them the pathway. And then they say, how? Show me. And praise God that we serve a Savior who is faithful to show us that pathway. And he says, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. The most important decision we will ever make in our lives, the most important daily decision, sometimes minute by minute decision, that we will ever make in our lives is to believe that Jesus is God that he has come in the flesh to redeem us, to set us free, to give us eternal life, and that that eternal life begins right here and right now, and that it is completed when we stand before him in glory. This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom God has sent. And they say, well, you know, what are the works? What are the signs? What, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to give us manna? Again, even though they have opened their hearts up to going down that pathway with Jesus, what do they do? They circle right back around. Are you going to give us something to eat? Is that the work you're going to do? Well, yes, he's going to give us something to eat. His flesh and his blood, his life, the fullness of his, of his divinity dwelling in us. He is going to give us what we cannot see, but which we desperately need. It may not satisfy our carnal desires. It may not give us permission to do whatever we want to do but it does the only thing, the only thing that is necessary. It gives us eternal life. The Lord speaking to Moses, as he's heard the people grumbling that their physical needs are not being met, and make no mistake, God provides for his children. But as the Lord is telling Moses how this is going to happen, how he's going to provide the quail and the manna, he says, I'm going to do this because I want to see whether my people will follow the law that I'm giving. I have assiduously, completely even, until today, avoided intimating anything like this in any of my sermons. Because I don't want us to jump into any kind of legalism. But I'm going to say this. God is watching us. He's cheering us on. He's, he's saying, my children, get it. Come on, one step more. Just like a little toddler or a baby who's learning to walk and mama or papa is you know, standing there saying, come on, you can do it. You can do it. That's how he's watching us. And you know, I think it's such a God thing that... He's been pounding on my heart to make sure that we enter into with this time of discernment and discovery. It's such a God thing that as he's been doing that, 
He gives us these readings. I don't pick these readings. He does. The church does. And so here we sit, here we stand, knowing that the Holy Spirit is laying out possibilities for us to do the works that Jesus has done. And as Jesus said, even greater works than these he will let us do. What an amazing time to be a part of the kingdom of God. What an amazing time to hear him say to us, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. And whoever believes in me shall never thirst. What a promise. May we do his will. Because his will lives in our heart. Jesus, you do feed us, and we neither thirst nor hunger except after you. Lord Jesus, come and fill our hearts and our minds with the fullness of who you are. Send your Spirit into our hearts in a fresh way and and allow us to partake in the joy of your will, in the joy of knowing you. We ask this in your holy and precious name. As you are able, I invite you to stand. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That, that they, they may be faithful, faithful ministers of your, your word and sacraments. <coughs> we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Grant us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. <coughs> Father, I lift up Mary, who is turning her heart to you after coming so low that she tried to end her life. May your blessing be upon her. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth. Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as your are Beloved, all you who do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and seek to be reconciled with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker and judge of us all, we acknowledge and repent of our many sins and offenses, which we have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your righteous anger against us. We are deeply sorry for these transgressions, the burden of them is more than we can bear. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may evermore serve and please you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You may be seated. I just have to say, you all are a joy 
for, for me to behold today. Thank you for being here. Coming to the holy table, let us remember these words. Through Christ, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. But do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of heaven. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Receive, O oh Lord, the gifts of your people given for the work of your church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give him thanks and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. 
on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Mary and Blessed Martha of Bethany, and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come, come to this to your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, 
but you are the same Lord who always delights in showing mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out into the world to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Mass is ended, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.